It's me, not Mario, and today's video will be focusing on fireballs, but not just any fireball, we have a fireball that will escalate in damage and carnage that will overall one shot the vast majority of combatants no matter where they are. And if that doesn't finish them, then we can of course bonk them with one mini hammer and gain tribute of endless ability energy as we go along. This isn't the Mushroom Kingdom folks, this is destiny and one but sure you will allow you to become a fireball maniac in the process. Do be sure to take care of yourself with the build as you may just fizzle yourself out if you're not careful. So before we head in, if you enjoy the video then do leave a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. To start off the subclass, we will be using Code the Devastator and combine the subclass with Ashen Wake to create an escalating damage build via grenades. Ashen Wake's ability offers the ability to turn on sticky grenades into a full impact grenade that upon touching a combatant will detonate on impact. This speciality for the grenades makes it incredibly effective when up against major combatants with shields or big health and you need something quickly to dispatch them if you don't have a shotgun or a fusion or anything else to counter. However, on its own it can't stand much of a chance if you enter in the end game. This is where it starts to slow down a bit with further usage. Now if you use Code the Devastator then this is where you can make your grenade go from doing 5 to 10k to easily reaching 50 to 100k against combatants of all types. The secret to this is Roaring Flames which is going to be increasing your damage stack per kill from 30% from the first kill, 69% from the second and 120% from the third all being via abilities. This one ability will allow you to increase your grenade damage each and every time you get a kill and from here you can wipe out even champions from full health if the conditions are right. Now to make it even more lethal we want to have as much energy coming our way so we can keep the abundance of damage going. I recommend you have the Battle for World mod for 2 worlds upon grenade kills and the Explosive World Maker mod for allowing your explosive abilities to create worlds as well. If you're not aware, having the 2 volume mods together will actually give you 4 worlds instead of the standard 3 or 2 which is a massive gain in ability energy. You also gain back grenade energy every time you then kill with it, so you can easily get 40-50% to 50 energy back from a single grenade and the worlds will fill in the rest. Honestly, you have to be mad not to play with this. Although this is all grenade use, don't be afraid to use your hammer as well as the perk Tireless Warrior will grant you health back upon using and collecting your thrown hammer. As this build will play close range, it's highly recommended you use your 2 abilities in steady fashion if you want to make the best of it. So with weapons, we have many, many ways to go about this so let's go with the simple and easy to access route and build from here. In primary wise, you should get a weapon with Adrenaline Junkie as the perk has now been updated to work in a similar fashion as Swashbuckler. As it relies on grenade use to activate, it only makes sense to pair this with the build and a great weapon to use this is the Chromo Rush AR. This weapon is a 720 RPM bullet hose with around 50 in the magazine and can go higher with specific perks and mods to add. Have you ever wanted the poor man's sweet business that gets stronger and stronger the more you keep firing it? Then if yes, then this weapon is the key for making the build even more fun. Your damage will be escalated each time you get a kill with the weapon or you can skip that and use your grenades to drastically reach times 5 stack and go from there. On top of that, it's also a nice weapon to use and easy to get from the Seasonal Splicer Umbral Engrams if you have the right materials to get it. Alternatively, Hung Jury, Scavelock and Last Breath are all other weapons you can farm for if you don't prefer this archetype. But honestly, you'll be missing out if you don't get it. Now for the secondary, I've gone with the Telesto so I can activate the Explosive Warmaker mod and the Debug Combatant via the Powerful Deconstruction mod and all of this will be for the better good. Ideally, I want to use Telesto to quickly gain wells when I don't have any grenade energy available as it can be both quick and devastating against all types of combatants you face. At the same time, we can use Telesto to debug combatants and make our lives a lot more easier to remember when we use our grenades or weapons to finish. In no particular order does this weapon need to be used in such manner and it is all down to the player discretion as to when they want to use it. I wanted to make sure the build had one backup available just in case we ended up in a tough situation. Of course, if you don't want to use Telesto or want to use an exotic in your prime instead such as the Traveler's Chosen, you can do that and instead you can add in the Plug 1 Fusion instead as that can also roll with Ingenium Junkie. And then for the heavy, we have the corrective measure with Demolitionist and Firefly. Both will be giving me energy and also creating walls upon explosive multi heals. A very good heavy that you should at least try and get yourself as its base stats and perks are perfect for those who have an itchy trigger finger. 
Alternatively, Ascendancy, the rocket launcher, or even Galahorn will fit the build perfectly if you see beauty into structure. For the stats, you want to invest in as much discipline as you can so you can keep your grenades going and flowing at best. Everything else will fall in line once your grenades are stacked up, but this will be the first thing to invest in and get out of the way with first. We will want to aim for 90 to 100 considering how much use around the discipline stat there will be. Although yes, we have perks such as Demolitionist and the Wild Mods available, we will still want to have this stat as high as it can be so we can truly never have to worry about waiting for it to regen again. Now, do remember, for us to gain ability energy back for all the abilities, we will need to extensively use our grenades and weapons with explosive damage to achieve the wells that drop and from there we can extend out further. For example, the Elemental Ordnance will allow us to create wells as we please, Bountiful Well will give us 2 to 4 wells for the price of 1, while Impact Induction will allow us to gain ability energy back for our grenades every time we use our melee. Now of course, add an Innovation for the grenade energy gain via Orbs of Power and Resortive Finisher as backup ability in case we need a quick energy boost and you'll never run out of grenade juice even when you're out of it. From here, you have a bit of room to mess around with and choose a stat that you'll be relying on for the entirety of the game. I chose to aim for Intellect as this is the most easiest and most simplest ability you'll be guaranteed to rely on no matter where you are. As my stat is at 40, we can bump this up to 50 for a more passive regen as we can go, or we can add in the Fondal Wisdom mod that will be applying a big bonus to stat and keep you from needing to invest further, as the stat buff will be actively working in the background. Personally, I've found that 2 Ashes to Ashes mod will be enough to keep you fully sustained and fully prepped to when you need to super the most. This now leaves you with the few following things left over to create the entirety of the build. Now, we have the Seagan Wallmaker mod, which is going to allow us to create wells within an active area of effect and it will chase us down, run our team down, into a collected. Very useful for when staying on the move and you don't want to linger in the area for too long. But this can of course be swapped out for Mini Wallmaker instead if you want more ways to create wells for synergy all round. Or you can swap in for the Phantom Might mod for even more solar damage if you're happy to opt in for a solar based weaponry. We then have the Fusion Scavenger mod so that we can always have special ammo available when we need it for our fusion. And then lastly, you have the Particle Deconstruction mod for debuffing combatants. However, this can also be swapped out for the Woven Heat mod instead if you want your abilities to debuff champions rather than your weapons. So, with everything compiled and put into a list, here is the overall idea of what you're getting yourself into overall. So, for head, we have Minor Recovery, Ashes to Assets times 2, and Battle for World mod. Arm, we have Recovery, Impact Induction, and Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener times 2, and Seeking Wells mod. A leg, we have Discipline, a Fusion Rifle Scavenger, Innovation, and Explosive Wellmaker mod. Mark, we have Maya Discipline, Resort of Finisher, and Particle Deconstruction mod. Now, as you can see from the build in its total form, it is completely badass. Your grenades will become more and more destructive over time, which will take on the ultimate form of annihilating any combatants you face, and from here you can do a lot of damage from a single throw. Think of this. By using your grenades and your melee one after another, you'll be able to build stacks of damage up for not only your grenades, but your weapons as well. And from here you can pull in some nutty damage from a single minor to an ultra major, etc. To your own delight. I think to put this build into perspective, its strengths lie within these abilities and how often you use them, and if you use them enough time, you'll be granted with a large amount of benefits to use and play with. Take a look at the build. We have the option to create wells one after another, and although they're being used to garner energy back to set abilities, we can also use them through other means if we desire. We can add in Frontal Wisdom for more intellect and faster super cooldown, or we can swap in the Frontal Mind for that extra damage bonus on solar weapons if we choose. Alternatively, we could use Charge with Light mods instead if we drastically want to use a specific mod such as Elemental Charge and Protective Light for extra protection, or we can use Firepower mod for even more grenade usage, which then frees up more mods usage around this one key area instead. It's simply, the build passively is going to be granting you a hell of a lot of benefits that can be expanded on further by adding or removing mods to do so. It's not so much of a complicated build that many people may make it out to be, and the damage you can create through debuffing and building stacks is honestly nothing to frown on. You can even use this in PvP, if that's your jam, or even use it in endgame content, which may be a struggle for some people, but is doable nonetheless, as long as you get a kill, of course. So, where do you go from here? 
Well, the build is your oyster, and you don't need to expand on this subclass on Exotic anymore. However, what you can do next though is build into the mod to allow you more synergy between your weapons so that every time you use weapons, or vice versa, you're going to be getting some everlasting benefits. That's what I would do, but let me know what you think in the comment section. So, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter, keep up to date with Destiny content, if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you all in the next one.